G'day and welcome to a quick and easy polygon tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a metal material in Blender using the uh, new metal materials which we uploaded to Polygon. So there are about 30 of these new metals, you know, appearing which look fantastic in, you know, any software or rendering engine you want to use. But of course, it only looks good if you connect them in the proper way. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video, what all the maps mean and how to connect it properly so that it looks like real metal. So what I've got here, this is the finished result, by the way, this uh, armored helmet. So I'm going to delete this material and I'm going to add a new material. So yeah, this is just an armored helmet off Turbo Squid, but feel free to use obviously whatever um, material or, or object you want. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to delete this diffuse shader and I'm going to replace it with a principled BSDF shader. So this is a new shader, which if you've never seen it before, you're like, whoa, I have never seen something with so many options. It looks confusing, um, but it is the way forward. So this is a new shader which came with Blender 2.79. As of the time I'm recording this, there are only test builds available for it, but it's gonna be the way forward for the future. Most materials you create are gonna use this new shader and it is fantastic. So I'm gonna connect this, just like you would for any other shader, connect this up to the material output, and here we go. Now, you might say looking at this like, hey, that looks, you know, starkly similar to the uh, diffuse shader that you had connected there. And that is correct. By default, it's just looking like a diffuse shader. But all these little values and things here, that's good. what's going to allow us to make it look like virtually any other type of material. We're only going to pay attention to uh, four of these values here, though, so don't get too overwhelmed. Right, now the first one to focus on is this base color. So this base color, just like a diffuse shader, it's whatever color you put right here. So we are going to add in texture, image texture, and I'm going to connect up the color map. So I'm using the Metal Rust Repolished 01, which is this guy right here off of Polygon. Um, just download all the maps in whatever size you want. I'm just gonna use 2K, but yeah. Anyway, so this is what it looks like. Okay, so if we add this in here and connect this to the base color input, you can see we've got that. Now it doesn't really look like metal yet. It still looks like a, really a, like a clay ceramic, sort of uh, material. Yeah, it doesn't really have uh, much of a look to it, but this is just the base color. Now, what's gonna make it look like metal is this slider right here that's called metallic. Now, this is a new, and this is why we're using the principal shader, is that it is gonna allow you to switch between two different types of materials because pretty much all materials in the world fall into the, um, the category of either a dielectric material, which is what this is right here, um, like diffuse, basically, you know, standard gloss, things like that, and metal materials, which is anything which is metal, because those two different types of materials handle lighting differently. Uh, sorry, handle light differently. So sliding it back and forth, you can see that when we slide it to one, it looks a little bit like metal. But actually, because this, this type of texture that we're using here, it actually has both metal and it's got diffuse objects in it. Because if we have a look at it on Polygon, you can see that the, the little grooves, the little like dots there, that would be like dirt. So dirt is dielectric, but the rest of it would be metal. So that is why the next map that we're gonna load in here is the metalness map. So this metalness map, if I load it in here and I connect this to the metallic input right there, uh, make sure that you set it to non-color data whenever you're not contributing directly to the color. So basically every other map except this one should be set to non-color data. Um, when you do that, it will now treat the majority of it like it is metal, but those tiny little dots there are now a dielectric uh, material. So it's, um, let me just pull this up here. I'll get the actual map for you so you can see it in detail. But it's it's a black and white map with, uh, yeah, little black dots in it, which are the, the dielectric parts of it. Okay, now it doesn't really look like metal, but that's because this roughness is so high. If we were to drag this roughness down, you can see that it starts to look a little bit more like the metal that you're used to. But we don't need to actually do anything manual with this because we've got our third map, which is the roughness where is it? Ah, the roughness map right here. So if I load this in, make sure it's set to non-color data and then connect it to the roughness input right there. 
you can see that it now has the correct value. You don't have to tweak anything. You just plug it straight in and it's done. Okay, awesome. So I'm just, I'll collapse this and I'll collapse that just so that it's a little bit further up. And then finally, the only other thing that this material is missing now is bumps because obviously our, um, our metal here, it's got these little grooves, these little uh, nooks and things in it. So the type of material that we're gonna use, sorry, the type of map we're gonna use for that is either a displacement map or a normal map. So the normal map is the traditional purple map, which you're used to seeing. And the displacement map is a black and white map. Now they both do the same thing. So really it's up to you which one you wanna use. I typically just stick to normal whenever it's a mostly flat surface. If I'm dealing with something like ground, like mud, where I wanna have big chunks sticking out of it, and I wanna use a, um, like adaptive subdivision with some micro displacement so that it actually changes the geometry of the mesh, uh, then I would use something like a displacement map. But in this case, it's a mostly flat material, so I'm just sticking to the normal map. So go ahead, load this in. Now, if I connect this to the normal input right there, you'll see that the shading gets horrible. And the reason for that is that we've got to make sure that we add in a normal map node in between them like that. And there we go. That's it. Now the rust, repolished rust is all correct. Now, if you want, you could tweak the normal amount. If you want to make it look like really, really worn, you just crank that up to whatever value you want. Um, but that is it. Now this, this workflow here, these four maps, so again, it's the base color, the uh, the color map going into the base color there, the metallic, sorry, the metalness map going into the metallic input, and then the roughness map going into the roughness input, and then finally the normal map going into the normal input there. That is the same workflow you're going to use for pretty much every material <laughs> this way going going forward, right? Um, and yeah, just to show you an example, I used it to also create a corroded metal. Okay, which is, uh, let's see which one it is. This one, corroded heavy, heavy metal, right? So it's the exact same thing. Just plugged it in, done, done, done. Now here, just as an example, um, I've used the displacement map instead of the normal map. And I just plugged this into the displacement um, input of the material output there. And to show you how it looks compared with the normal map, if I disconnect that and then select, uh, sorry, plug the normal map in there, you can see they're virtually the same. Really, it's uh, it's it's up to you as to which one you want to use. They supposedly say that normal map has a bit more detail because there's an extra uh, what it, there's an extra axis that the bump is traveling on. Personally, I don't see much of a difference between them, um, but I just stick to the normal map because most things are flat, and so I just stick with that. Um, but there you go. So that is how you do it. That is how you create, um, yeah, ba basically any different type of metal that you want using Blender. So yeah, hope that was useful. If you found it useful, please give it a like so that others can find it more easily. And um, thank you for watching. Bye.